This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. I'm Kate Canapo with the Pacific Northwest Defense Coalition. We are the membership association representing the Pacific Northwest defense and security industry. I'm joined here today with, Je uh, with Jeff Lawrence of Impact Washington and Max Olick with the Ignite Institute. We'll be discussing some assistance that is available to Washington state businesses to comply with Department of Defense cybersecurity requirements. As background, in response to the changing threat landscapes, the Department of Defense is updating cybersecurity requirements for all suppliers, which will eventually include a five-tiered and audited cybersecurity program called the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, or CMMC for short. To highlight the importance of cybersecurity in all procurement activity, Ellen Lord, the Undersecretary for Defense Acquisition and Sustainment stated that security is foundational to acquisition and should not be traded along with cost <laughs> and schedule and performance moving forward. As you know, Washington State is home to many defense suppliers, both direct and in the supply chain, including, of course, aerospace manufacturing, but also maritime, technology, tactical, robotics, unmanned innovations, as well as the service providers and suppliers that are, uh, support the regional bases and the men and women who serve our country. Defense is important to our state economy. Yet to continue to supply Department of Defense, all these companies will need to comply with these evolving cybersecurity requirements. And we need to start this work now. Luckily, Impact Washington is managing a program that can help with this. It's funded through the U.S. Department of Defense Office of Economic Adjustment through the Washington State Department of Commerce with support from the Pacific Northwest Defense Coalition, the Ignite Institute, and the Washington PTAC, or Procurement Technical Assistance Center. I am going to hand things over to Jeff Lawrence, who can give us a little bit of an overview about the program. Yeah, thanks a lot for the intro, Kate. Uh, as uh, Kate mentioned, we're very fortunate to have been awarded a grant uh, through the Department of Defense, uh, Defense Office of Economic Adjustment through our Washington State Department of Commerce to be able to assist small and medium-sized businesses in the defense supply chain to understand and prepare for cybersecurity compliance and the and an upcoming audit for the for the CMMC that uh, that I think the the defense supply chain has become quite familiar with in the last uh, several months. There are basically three elements to this program. There's a uh, an outreach element. There's a training element and there's a pilot program of one-on-one uh, -on -one support for, uh, for 19 uh, small and medium-sized businesses in the state. The outreach was done to more than uh, 3,500 companies, organizations in the defense uh, supply chain. That's been done. Uh, hopefully you have heard about this through, through an outreach. We also have been offering training. Uh, we did a, uh, Earlier, we did a series of three webinars uh, in collaboration with PNDC. And uh, uh, at least the last webinar is available both on the websites of PNDC and also Impact Washington, if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to view that. We're also doing a, uh, we have put together with the support of the Ignite Institute, a, a cybersecurity readiness learning center where we have two learning management system courses that are available for use uh, at a no-cost basis to all of the suppliers in the defense uh, supply chain in the state of Washington. We also have a pilot program which will provide one-on-one -on -one support for, uh, for 19 selected clients to be able to, to meet with some, some cybersecurity experts to, um, to be able to write um, or to be able to do a gap analysis, uh, to write a a poem and a, a, a system security plan with the support of these cybersecurity experts. 
Um, so I will turn it over to uh, Max to tell us a little bit more about the um, about the learning center. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so actually, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and thank you, Kate, for the for the introduction. So one of the things that we learned uh, when we started to do training for the defense industrial base is that a lot of people, no matter how much training we do, uh, they, it's not enough. There, there's the technical literacy of the defense industrial base on what cybersecurity is fairly low. Um, however, uh, the, the challenge is that with the COVID and webinars, a lot of people don't have time. So what we kind of uh, came up with is a learning management center that is self-paced and it leverages the concepts of social learning, short courses, very much to the point in order for your C-suite leadership as well as compliance management, procurement team members, uh, so they can quickly get up to speed. So we teamed up with Impact Washington and we uh, kind of uh, through a cohort of people got feedback and these are some of the courses that, that we have uh, uh, presented and, and actually developed and deployed. So if you're part of defense industrial base supply chain in the state of Washington, what you're seeing on my screen right here is the Ignite Institute, just click on learn, then there's a, a drop down menu called CMMC registration. Uh, and when you get to this page, uh, it, it actually has the logo of Impact Washington. Uh, and then of course it says, hey, $125, but if you're within the state, it's absolutely no cost to you, right? So if you click on register, I'm not gonna click on this button, it'll take you through a simple workflow, and then you'll get access to two of the courses. Again, the two courses that we're discussing here are the senior management course. It kind of gives you the brief overview of what that is. 15 to 20 minutes, very interactive, easy to understand. And then if you want to take a deeper dive uh, and, and really go into more of, of practitioner level information, this is about 45 to 60 minutes, right? So all of this is available to you uh, as a resource from Impact Washington. Take advantage of it. This will help you prepare. Uh, and also it is part of the grant. So before you start to work with some of the cybersecurity consultants, uh, this is one of the requirements you will get what's called a certificate of completion. You're not getting certified as a CMMC a professional or anything like that. This is a certificate of completion. It counts as user awareness training. It's a step towards compliance. It does not help you comply completely. However, when you go through the CMMC requirements, you will see that you are supposed to be trained and the training certificates are, is an evidence of that. So. I'm gonna pass it over uh, back to Jeff, uh, perhaps to share a little bit more information and, uh, and, and Kate, back over to you as well. Right. Yeah, if you can, if you can maybe put up that, uh, put up the website with the application form for the pilot program. Uh, as I mentioned, the third element of the pilot program is that we, uh, is it a part of the grant? We have uh, been able to contract uh, seven uh, cybersecurity service providers to be able to support 19 of the members of the defense industrial uh, base in, in the state of Washington uh, to assist them with um, uh, with learning more about uh, uh, about CMMC to work with them on a, uh, on a program to go through the elements of the CMMC uh, to develop a plan of action and mile, milestones or a, uh, or a poem uh, which is an element uh, which is included uh, in the uh, in the readiness training, and then to develop a system security plan, an SSP, uh, and start working on the on the process to get you audit ready, uh, which is going to become a requirement within the CMMC to undergo a CMMC audit. This is targeted. This training is targeted at at uh, at level three, CMMC level three, which is uh, roughly equivalent to the to the, uh, the NIST 800-171 standards for those of you who, who are familiar with that. Uh, but that's where uh, most of our small and medium-sized businesses are going to be um, going to be falling here in the state, and that's where, where the greatest amount of need is. Uh, so uh, we uh, would, would encourage you to apply to be one of these 19 that we're going to support. This is the application form. It's on our website. Um, and uh, impactwashington.org, and uh, you can find this application site there. 
Um, in this in this work that these 19 uh, companies are doing with the seven cybersecurity service providers, uh, we're making use of, uh, of a tool within the Ignite platform, which is uh, uh, which is a platform to um, uh, to be able to track uh, and to measure the progress with the uh, as you move along toward your uh, cybersecurity uh, hygiene improvement. So I'll turn it back over to Max to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jeff. And, and yes, as Jeff said, application, please apply for it. Uh, towards the end, we'll uh, definitely cover dates too. So um, in terms of the tooling that's available to you, so the first thing is the training. Then the next uh, step is after you have been trained, our, our next goal is to bring about visibility into the defense industrial base and also some sort of a tracking mechanism. And that's where the Ignite Assurance platform comes in. Uh, and essentially what that is, is a, is a risk management tool. Uh, so as you mature along your process, when you start with kind of the plan, which is a system security plan, you develop a plan of action and milestones, you end up with laundry list of tasks you have to do. You may need new technology, you may need decryption, firewalls, all of the different technology items that cyber professionals work on, well, that requires some sort of a tracking mechanism uh, as well as an integration with some of those tools. And that's the fundamental value of, of Ignite Assurance Platform. And the way the platform is built, it is integrated with some of the defense requirements and specifications with tools such as EMAS. Uh, you also have to submit your scoring uh, by the 30th, which, uh, which we'll hear a little bit more about later on. Our software uh, that we're providing as part of the grant as a benefit to you is integrated with some of the defense software that uh, requires uh, reporting. So uh, a lot of benefit for yourself, for, for the community, and also for the DOD in order to bring about visibility. And that's the second part of the benefit. First is the training, then is the, the, the platform itself. And then you also get uh, help from one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of uh, excellent consultants that, that Impact Washington has selected. Yeah, just a couple more words about the um, about the application. Uh, we are taking applications for that now. We uh, that application will be open through November 25th, and we're going to be awarding uh, and making the matches between the uh, 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 between the the uh, companies who are selected and the cybersecurity service providers from November 2nd up through the end of the year. So it, uh, this can take a little time. We have a lot of applications already. I highly encourage you to to, be, uh, to apply. The grant will cover up to 80% of the costs of the, uh, of the support that you're getting from the cybersecurity service provider, uh, 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 in addition to the cost of the use of the platform. And for all the manufacturers or all of the all the people in the uh, in the defense supply chain, uh, uh, both manufacturers and others others in the in the defense supply chain, that um, that learning center course information is available to all at no cost. So um, uh, get your applications in. We'll be starting to make the awards uh, on November second, and we'll continue to do that on a rolling basis through the end of the year. Great, thank you. This is gonna be such a big support for the Washington State uh, defense supply chain. Um, Max, I know you mentioned this a little bit, but um, can you talk a little bit about the new DFARS interim rule and how that impacts CMMC? I know there's some confusion about that. Sure, there, there's absolutely a lot of confusion about it. So, uh, so the DOD recently published uh, an interim rule, which is open for what's called a commenting period. Uh, essentially, what that uh, interim rule uh, says is it reinforces what the defense industrial base is already supposed to be doing, but now they have added a mechanism of self-assessment with the score. So you, you should be doing what's called the NIST 171 assessment, and then based off of that, you need to self-assess. There's a scoring methodology that has been defined, and then you need to submit your scores to the Department of Defense and that interim rule goes in effect by the 30th of November. So if you're bidding on contracts, there's a lot of sensitivity to this. Uh, again, the NIST 171 guidance has been out for many, many, many years. Uh, some folks are ahead of the curve. Some people are just catching up 
because this was just published recently. Uh, so you can separate out CMMC from the interim rule because CMMC is still maturing and developing, but NIST 171 and the requirement has been in, in, in place for a very long time. So, uh, and this particular grant, the training is actually readiness for that, right? So take advantage of this, get a hold of your consultants as, as well as uh, the training. It will help you prepare for what's you're supposed to be submitting on the on the 30th. Great, thank you. So if I'm understanding correctly, any work you do towards any of these cybersecurity rules will help with your eventual CMMC compliance. Absolutely, absolutely. It layers on top of each other, right? It, it builds from one to the next. It, we, the biggest challenge in cybersecurity is we use a lot of different terms to mean the same thing. Uh, NIST 171 and CMMC, there is a huge overlap between the two, especially because CMMC is still in draft, right? it inherited a lot from, from 171. So everything we're talking about, it's with the intentionality of helping out businesses to eventually reach that state. Right, right. Um, Jeff, can you talk a little bit more about uh, how much is support is available for this cybersecurity program um, to those 19 companies that are selected? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's going to be, uh, for those 19 that are selected, there's going to be a pretty in-depth work done with, with their, their assigned uh, cybersecurity service providers. Uh, they're going to work with them on, uh, on going through the entire uh, on this 800-171 and uh, the future CMMC Level 3 or what is existing at the current time as the, as the CMMC Level 3 and get them prepared. Uh, you know, the the objective is to is to move toward audit readiness, to move toward uh, CMMC level three audit readiness. Um, also, another thing I'd like to uh, to mention is that the idea of this grant is to really create a framework, not only to to support these 19 companies and with learning management. Uh, system training uh, for everybody in the defense supply chain, but to, but to create a framework going forward. We hope to be able to work with many different sizes of companies uh, in many different locations of the, of the state and to uh, put together experiences that we have in this, uh, within this grant to be able to have, uh, have a roadmap and a framework for other companies to come later on. Uh, we understand there's a lot of consternation, a lot of concern about the cost and the, and the amount of effort that's uh, going to go into this by the, by the members of the, uh, of the defense supply chain. And by going at this in a systematic manner with being able to have a common way of recording on the Ignite Assurance platform, we hope to be able to develop some very good framework for others uh, in the future for how do I how do I become cyber secure? How do I clear that hurdle of being able to be uh, having the training for the readiness for a CMMC audit? Uh, there are a lot of questions out there right now, and the intent is not only to help um, these companies right now, but to uh, be able to create the framework for other companies in the future. Great, thank you, Jeff. Um, this is kind of along those same lines. Um, what are you hearing about the cost to become CMMC compliant? Sure. So, uh, Jeff, would you like me to kind of take try to take a shot at this? Sure. Yeah, you take a shot at that, Max. Sure. Sure. Uh, thank you, sir. So, um, you know, cost of of CMMC is is not understood yet. However, we can discuss the components and how do we reduce the cost. And as Jeff mentioned, how do we go about building a framework that works for everybody in, in this state? Um, so, you know, it, the cost always starts with cost of labor. Cybersecurity professionals are expensive. When you, when you get a CISSP, when you, when you get all of the credentials, the cost naturally is going to increase for that one individual to work with you one to two hours a week or a month or whatever it might be. So the only way to kind of reduce the cost of, of this is to codify and democratize through technology, right? Uh, uh, almost like QuickBooks. Uh, I used to, I, I use that example quite a bit because if you look at QuickBooks, uh, without it, CFO, CPA, and your bookkeeper would have a very difficult time working in some sort of spreadsheets. 
right? In order for us to reduce the cost of labor, we have to codify this. And that is the benefit of leveraging technology such as uh, Ignite Platform, because a lot of our consultants are worried about the same thing. Uh, they're worried about helping out the smallest guys, the smallest companies with two to three person shop. How do we help them comply? We think automation is the key. We think good people are the key. And the, you know, in, in terms of the actual hard cost, some of that has been documented by the Department of, uh, of Defense. Uh, but when the Defense Department considers something to be a small business, it's not what we would initially consider a small business. Those are some of the micro businesses that we're trying to support through Impact Washington. Um, so that's my comment about cost. I know that's a fuzzy answer, but we are literally every day trying to think of ways, creative ways on how do we reduce this cost? How do we reduce the burden so there can be business happening within this state? Uh, Jeff, uh, what are your, your thoughts in terms of cost of this? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think the honest answer is we don't know. Uh, there have been, um, I think that, that there are a lot of micro businesses. We talk about small and medium sized business and they, uh, by the, by the U.S. Department of Commerce standards, anything under 500 employees is a, uh, is a small to medium business. Well, there are a lot of companies in the state of Washington and across the country for that matter, who are small businesses who are maybe two to five employees up to, uh, up to 50 employees. Well, the, the amount of financial burden that a small operation like that can handle as compared to a 500 employee company is entirely different. So, uh, so we um, at Impact Washington and with the MEP network in general, we deal with a lot of those smaller companies. And, uh, and in fact, the highest percentage of those in the, in the defense supply chain are those smaller companies. And there's a lot of concern on the part of the Department of Defense, uh, OEA, and uh, also within the Washington State uh, Department of Commerce that we need to keep those small suppliers in the defense supply chain. And we need to support them with this kind of training and with developing the kind of tools so that we are able to make those costs manageable. And so that's that's really the intent. I'm really I'm pleased that we're able to participate in this because this is really important not only for the for the small companies, but for the state and for the nation as well. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. I know on behalf of all the Pacific Northwest Defense Coalition members, we are so appreciative of this help. Um, I think everybody understands that cybersecurity is important, and this is an opportunity to take those steps you need to protect your business, and our nation, na, nation security, really. Um, this is an important part of that. And um, we know it's a big lift to get cybersecurity compliant, but th this is some great help to start on that road. Um, I put up here the uh, email address, cyber at impactwashington.com. Um, you can definitely reach out to them or just go directly to impactwashington.com and- um, Sorry, under what? Sorry, Kate. Uh, um, I should have caught that. It's actually impactwashington.org. Okay. What well, impactwashington.org, and we can um, find out. Um, you can find out more information about these programs. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.